Hello everyone, this is the historiographer. Today, we will explore the life and times of the man that has become a symbol of national resistance against colonialism and fascism, the man known as the Lion of the Desert and the leader of the Martyrs, a man who has forever ingrained his name in history due to his two decades long guerrilla resistance against Italian colonialism in Libya, therefore directly enraging Benito Mussolini himself. Meet Omar al Mukhtar. Little information is recorded on Mukhtar's early life, and sources differ on his birth date, with some stating that he was born in 1858 while others in 1862. Nevertheless, al Mukhtar's birth date location is known, as he was born near Tobruk in the then region of Ottoman Cyrenaica to an Arab tribe of the Banu Hilal. His father died in the Hajj pilgrimage while en route to Mecca, hence leaving the young child orphaned and essentially with no income. He was, however, at the behest of his dying father, subsequently adopted by a sheikh called Sheikh Hassan, belonging to the Sunusi Sufi reformist movement. This movement, a de facto independent movement under nominal Ottoman control, was prominent in Ottoman Libya, Western Egypt, as well as parts of Central and West Africa and had the ultimate aim of uniting these aforementioned regions by Islamic teachings in order to expel the ever encroaching western colonial powers from Africa by means of struggle or jihad. While al Mukhtar was educated early on in the local mosques and kutab, he impressed his teachers by his quick wit and memorization abilities. He was therefore sent to continue his studies at the Senussi University in the capital of the Senussi movement, a city called Jahboub near the Egyptian border. There, Omar stayed for eight years, learning the Quran, the Hadith, history, lineages, and the environment surrounding him at the hands of seasoned scholars. He therefore became an Imam, a teacher of the Quran and the Hadith, and naturally, he joined the Sunusi movement. During the years that Omar al Mukhtar spent studying in Jahboub, he was able to gain a strong reputation amongst the sheikhs of the Sunusi movement. That reputation was so strong that the leader of the Senussis, Muhammad al Mahdi al Senussi, decided to take Omar al Mukhtar with him in the year 1895 on his journey from Al Jahboub to Kufra in the southeast of the Libyan desert. After this trip, Omar al Mukhtar went with the Senussi leader to western Sudan. In Sudan, al Mukhtar was appointed as a sheikh of a town called Ain Qalaq gaining valuable administrative experience. However, two years later, Al Mahdi as Sunusi appointed him in 1897 as sheikh of another town called Al Qusur in northeastern Cyrenaica. His close relationship with the Sunusi led him to acquire the title of Sayyid, therefore becoming known as Sidi Omar which was only bestowed upon the well-known Senussi sheikhs. When the French occupation of Chad began in the year 1900, the French became hostile to the Senussi movement as it presented a bulwark against their expansionist dreams in Central Africa. Indeed, the movement mobilized itself against the French and sent thousands of fighters to Chad to fight French expansionism. During his fight in Chad, Al Mukhtar developed his tactical skills in guerrilla and desert warfare against the much better equipped French forces. This would prove critical for the Libyan teacher in the future. Muhammad Al Mahdi Al Senussi died in 1902 and he was succeeded by Ahmed Sharif Al Senussi. The new leadership summoned him to return to Cyrenaica. By 1906, he was appointed for the second time as a sheikh of the town of Al Qusur, and he managed it so well that the Ottomans congratulated him on his ability to bring stability to a region rife with instability. Al Mukhtar was also chosen to settle tribal disputes, and he remained in this position for eight years until the pivotal year of 1911. During the period before 1911, the teacher fought the armies of the British Mandate on the Egyptian Libyan border in the areas of Bardiya and Saloum, especially in the Battle of Saloum in 1908. This battle ended with the fall of the town in the hands of the British Mandate over Egypt. As always, however, Al Mukhtar acquired valuable military experience during his fight against the colonial British forces. On the 29th of September 1911, fueled by the desire of European colonial expansion to rival its European counterparts, Italy declared war on the Ottoman Empire with the aim of occupying Ottoman domains in the Mediterranean. Italian forces quickly landed in Tripoli as well as in Derna, Tobruk, and Benghazi. 
all three cities in Cyrenaica close to Al Mukhtar's town of Al Qusur. At this time, Omar Al Mukhtar was in the city of Al Kufra in the heart of the Libyan desert. When he learned of the news of the Italian invasion, he returned quickly to Al Qusur to recruit its people to resist the Italians, and starting what would become a two decades long resistance campaign against Italian forces. The Libyan teacher turned guerrilla fighter succeeded in rallying a few hundred fighters. Al Mukhtar used the rugged terrain of the Green Mountain region in Cyrenaica to his advantage. Furthermore, the guerrilla fighter began to establish contact with Ottoman Turkish soldiers led by Enver Pasha and Kemal Atatürk, as well as Senussi fighters who had left their struggle in Chad to focus against Italy's invasion. In total, the number of Italians amounted to at most 100,000 troops equipped with tanks and aircraft which was the first use of aircraft in modern war against nearly 20,000 Libyan and 7,000 Ottoman soldiers, mostly comprised of infantrymen but also of mobile cavalry. Given the futility of conventional warfare against the technologically superior Italians, mobile guerrilla tactics and hit and drawn attacks were used to a devastating effect on Italian soldiers. Indeed, while Italian forces had control of the major cities, the countryside remained untamed, where Libyan fighters hid, patiently waiting for an opportunity to strike. However, in 1912, the First Balkan War broke out, a war which was disastrous to say the least for the Ottoman. Stretched too thin, the Ottoman Empire was forced to conclude a peace treaty with the First Treaty of Luzan in October of 1912, thus abandoning Omar al Mukhtar and the Senussis to face the full might of the Italian forces. This has been part 1 of 2 on the life and times of Omar al Mukhtar. Join us next week as we discover how al Mukhtar would go on to fight Mussolini's forces led by. By Rodolfo Graziani, as well as the enduring legacy of the Libyan resistance fighter who would go on to earn the respect of even his fiercest enemies. If you liked the video, consider subscribing to spread history. This has been the historiographer, and for now, have a good one.